Well, hello, boys and girls. Today, we're going to talk about Texas animals, specifically the turtles and the snakes. And we're going to learn a lot about them, see different ones, see what can even happen in the wild that you might not think can happen. But the first ones we're going to see are the turtles. We're going to see a three-toed box turtle. You'll find out why they're called a three-toed box turtle. Okay, the first one here, take a good look. There she is. That's right. This is a girl. And you can take a good look at her back paws here as she pees. This right here is three toes. If I can get those three toes, there we go. Three toes. That's why they're called a three-toed box turtle. Look at this pretty animal. Generally found in wooded areas. You will find them other places. The females usually are not quite as colorful as the males, kind of like what you'll find in some bird families. And that's kind of interesting because their mouth is called a beak, kind of like a bird. But their shell here is called the carapace on top and the bottom is called the plastrum. Let's look at a different one here. Let's just see what we see anything different about this one. This one is a boy. He also has a beak. He also has the carapace and the plastrum. And he's a three-toed box turtle. Look at the three toes. If we, he'll be still a little bit. There we go. Just going to the bathroom being a bad, bad boy. But look at that face. Isn't that just a face anybody can love? So what's the top called? The carapace. What's the bottom called? The plastrum. What's the mouth called? The beak. That's right, they can fly like a bird. Well, no, they really can't fly. But no, and they never lose their shell. It grows with them. They're not like a hermit crab and the turtle crawls out of the shell. No, it's just like our arm. It grows and gets larger, needs larger sized shirts and shoes. Arms don't need shoes, but our feet grow. That's right. So let's say bye to the three-toed box turtle. Bye, three-toed three -toed box turtle. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wave your, okay, wave something. Okay, look at the camera. Okay, bye-bye. Now we're going to talk about Texas snakes. Yes, those wonderful animals that many people fear. Nothing to be scared of. They can't run away. They don't have a leg or two or three or four so they can't run. Yes, just back away from them when you see them, admire them, take a photo, maybe even a little video, and you can watch that animal in the wild. But we're gonna talk about some of those Texas snakes right now. We have a poster here. This shows you the ones of Southeast Texas. That's where we live. Yes, Houston is in Southeast Texas. So take a look right here. You have the diamondback rattlesnake, he's found literally in Galveston, all the way along the coast to Mexico. You have the pygmy rattlesnake. He's found spread out in different places. And then you have the timber rattlesnake, which is also spread out in different places. The closest you'll find these two to Houston is Montgomery County, just north of the woodlands. Now you look at this side, we have the non-rattlesnakes, the pit vipers, which are the rattlesnakes, the cottonmouth, and the copperhead. So now we have the cottonmouth, we have the copperhead, and we have the coral snake. When you look at all these, these are the ones that live around us. Do not use rhymes. That doesn't work. Red and yellow kill a fellow, red and black venom black. It's not a good healthy rhyme to learn how to ID snakes. Same way with the shape of their heads. Learn each individual snake. And a good way to do that is to use a guide. This guide is just for the Houston and Southeast Texas area. It has many, many snakes on it. And you can carry this in your back pocket. And when you see a snake, you can pull it out, look for the snake in the guide, and determine which one it is. You can pick these up at your state parks and their gift shops. But let's get to looking at some snakes. So the first one, we're gonna see it's gonna be a wild snake. And yes, these are wild snakes. This one here was bit by a cat and a mess. I mean, really a mess. He was very sick, had to put on antibiotic. 
He was actually belly up for a few days before he finally started getting healthy enough, but he's a little too safe, you could say, not to release. He just should not be released. So we've kept this snake. She's a little bit jumpy, but this is a Texas rat snake. Notice the solid color head and the white chin. That's a great way to identify the snake. They have a red tongue, usually have blotches on their back. But this is your Texas rat snake. Neat animals, really neat. Can you guess what they might eat? Yes, rats, and they kind of like eggs and small birds also. They're good, great climbers. They can climb whatever they want. Neat animals. But this is one that was found in North Houston, and it had been attacked by a cat, but it recovered, but definitely too tame to release in the wild. We'll put him up in a nice, safe snake bag. That's right, they're called snake bags. There's never been a guinea pig in this bag. Oh, we're going to move to Southwest Texas. This is Brandy, the gray-banded king snake. These are really one of the jewels of Texas. What do I mean by a jewel? You know, like a pretty necklace, a jewel. Yes, they're one of the jewels of Texas because people travel from all over the world in hopes to see one of these crawling around on a rock cliff at night. Yes, they climb rock cuts. You can see that beautiful face. Very soft, very neat snake. If you look at their belly, they're camouflaged on their belly. Kind of looks like shadows, right? So they're climbing along a rock cliff and the animals looking up at them, they see shadows of the rocks, not the snake itself. If an owl is flying over looking for a snake to eat, the back pattern will match the rocks as well. And it's hard to see them. That's right, I said an owl. I didn't say a hawk or an eagle. These animals are nocturnal. They come out at night only. You do not see them during the day, but she can see during the day. So I say, bye, Brandy. Another beautiful king snake, gray banded king snake. Goes into her snake bag. What else do we have in here? Let's see, all kinds of fun stuff. Well, we started with a rat snake. Let's look at a different rat snake. This rat snake actually can be found in similar areas where the gray banded king snake is found, southwest Texas, all the way to Big Bend. Look at this gorgeous rat snake. These animals are beautiful. Look at the lines, salmon belly. These are just gorgeous animals. This is called a Baird's rat snake. Very neat animal. They do climb rock cliffs just like the gray banded king snake going along the cuts, but this is Mrs. Baird. She's actually a mister. But Mrs. Baird's spelled the same way as Mrs. Baird's bread. Okay, let's say bye, Mrs. Baird's. Oh, wave your tongue at everybody. Okay, well, don't wave your tongue at everybody. Just be that way. We're going to have a talk when we get home. Oh, we are home. Well, we'll see about that. Need animals. If you have questions, you can email us at texassnakes.net. You can see the email addresses there to Michelle or to Clint. I'm Clint, better known as the Snake Man. Oh my, getting, getting much larger here. This, oh, this is a neat snake. This kind of in that rat snake group, but not. This is a corn snake, a Texas corn snake. So they don't look like what you'll find in say the East Coast, say Florida or Kentucky. This is our Texas corn snake. You can look at the checkered belly. You can look at the two stripes on the tail here. If she'll show them to me. Look at that. See the stripes on the tail on the underneath? That will show you that this is a corn snake. These are generally not a friendly species, but this one here is doing very well. That's right, you, you're a friendly girl, huh? Yeah, this is a girl snake. She's very nice and soft, very different than the rat snakes, but similar looking blotches on the back. But this is a corn snake, Texas corn snake. 
see her climbing on me. They climb very well. Let's see if we can get her in the back. That can be a trick. Let's see what she does. Let's kind of get everybody can see this. Let's see if we can get her in the back. I go this way. I let go and she usually crawls out before I get her back in. Let's try this again. Well, okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, I'll close it real quick. Ah, got lucky. Yes, that's how you get her in the back. She's not one for wanting to go in, but it's just temporary. She'll be going to her nice cage in a little bit. Oh my, got a small snake in here. This is the, we're back to king snakes again. This is the small, not the smallest, but the softest king snake in the state of Texas. It's called a prairie king snake. Would they be found in the forest? Well, they actually are. But they're more likely found in fields, like where cows live and big prairie areas. But they're called a prairie king snake. You can see it does not have the checkered so much like the corn snake, much smaller head, but it does have the blotches on the back like the rat snake and the corn snake. This is called a prairie king snake. Very soft animal. So can you see it now? There we go. Oh, look at it waving its tongue at you. Can you see that? Oh, she likes you. That's a good girl. That's right. So prairie king snakes, a lot different. These are docile by nature. They're very friendly. Would that mean you pick up a wild one? Of course not. You take three giant steps backwards away from the snake. Then you take your phone and go, or your camera, or you just admire, enjoy wildlife. You can stand back and look at it. So we'll put her in her bag, see what else we can find in my bucket over here. It's gonna get crazy, I think. Let's see, huh. okay, yeah, this will be crazy. This is a Texas bull snake, like, you know, bull with horns, a bull snake. And his name is Rocky Jr. That's right, his daddy's name was Rocky Sr. Rocky Sr., well, let's just put it this way. Rocky Jr. is nothing like his daddy. He is a pretty good sized snake. We can see if we can stretch him out here. He is not little, he's pretty big. And these bull snakes can get up to seven feet long. That's right. So this is a bull snake. See if we can see his face real well. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that face. Bull snakes are one of our prettiest snakes, but here is something why you learn each individual snake. Blotches on the back again, our fourth snake that has blotches. So you have identifying factors on every single snake. This snake actually mimics the rattlesnake with the banding on its tail. So it's a rattlesnake mimic. So it will vibrate this tail while making a hissing rattle noise with its mouth. Even though he's crazy, he's a little too tame to hiss. He hasn't hissed in many years, but he did when he was a baby. Nothing like your dad, nothing at all. His dad was the sweetest bull snake I've ever met. And literally people, everybody liked Rocky. So this snake here is just a neat animal. They get very big, they're a kill scale. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. They have a little line on every single scale. It's called a kill. So it's kind of rough, but soft. At the same time, it's very, very soft. So let's say bye, Rocky Jr. Say bye to everybody. Y'all notice that triangular head, it will show it to you. Yeah, well, he's not really showing it to you, but he has a triangular head, just to show you it's a myth. It's not a true statement. See if we can get this guy in the back. Hmm. Oh, that's my armpit smells good. Okay, let's see what we get here. Hmm. Okay, in the bag, closed up. Lucky there, that was easy compared to that corn snake, huh? Okay, let's see what we can find now. This might even be our last snake for today, but next week we'll have a new video. This is a rare snake. 
That's right, not common at all. I've never seen another one. It is a Texas rat snake, but it is partially albino maybe, what we call a T1 albino, the first step of albinoism in the wild. But this snake came from Kima, Texas. It was a little baby snake when I got it. Does it look like a little baby today? No, it's, I think it might be as big as Rocky or bigger. It's a big snake. See if we can get it up close. You can see that face and those eyes. Yes, this is a neat snake. Again, blotches on the back, but we showed that on the other rat snake. But this snake is a naturally occurring albino. I received an email many years ago. This guy showed me a picture of a snake that was in a swimming pool in Kima. So I rode him back and said that somebody's escaped corn snake because it looked like an albino corn snake from the photo. Well, when I get to Kima, I look at the little baby snake and I go, oh my goodness, this is a Texas rat snake that happens to be albino. Even as a baby, his tail was damaged. You can see all that tail looks kind of blunted. Some probably a cat or a dog or something got a hold of it. But this snake here would not have lived in the wild because he cannot camouflage. He doesn't have the camouflaging colors like all the other snakes you saw. So this is a snake that had to come out of the wild to survive. And he's doing very well. He eats well, he grows well, and he's pretty friendly for a rat snake. Rat snakes generally are not friendly. This one here, not too bad, but neat animal. So let's all say goodbye to this snake. Say bye. And remember, when you see a snake outside, it's a wild animal to admire, to enjoy, to learn about. It's called observable science. When you're actually watching these animals, whether it's a bird or a fish, or these wonderful snakes, you are observing science, biological animals moving, what they eat, how they move. This is something you can see with your own eyes and learn about these wonderful animals. Well, I look forward to seeing you again, and I hope you are staying cool in this hot temperature. See you next week.